And I don't need to highlight you. No, you uh, don't, because you I have the camera, screen sharing. So. Yeah. Good. OK, and um, now for the hard part on this fly, which is putting the wings and the topping. Now, to make any headway on this, you don't want to just grab your your tippet neck and pull a couple of feathers and then hope for the best. The best is to actually prepare fly, uh, your your feathers. And what I've done is I try to sort tippet feathers and, and strip them off and have them sorted a little bit by sizes in a box. And that's because I've done more than one of these flies. And the other thing you want to do with these uh, with these tippet feathers is use a pair of flat jawed pliers that are reasonably slim and flatten the stem of the feather at the point you tie it in so that the flattened portion sits at an angle to the main plane of the feather. The idea being that as you tie it in, that flat portion lies flat on the hook and then your wing tilts then, right? So if you think this is the, this is the feather perpendicular, right, to my hook and then with this flattened stem, you tie it in so that it lies at an angle. And so if you do these angles right, you get on one side, so this is the side I'm showing you here, the feather is going to have the top closer to the center and the bottom flared out a little bit. So the purpose of the exercise is essentially to construct sort of a tent over the underwing uh, made out of polar bear and have your two the two sides of the the two parts of the wing should meet ideally like this at the top so the crest can then sit on top of that okay experts can probably do without all of that stuff but this is you know kind of these are things that i've learned as i was trying to get this this done for the first time ever. And so I have a pair of wings that have been already tinkered with. So these stems have been flattened. And then I attach them loosely on top so I can jiggle them around. If I've done everything right, I can move this thing. So that's why I'm not tightening the thread just yet. It's just a couple of turns of thread without tightening it. And as you can see, my wings do meet in the middle. And the moment you're happy with this, you can do two or three turns of thread tightly. There you are. <clears throat> Once that's done, just trim the st stems and onto the topping. Now this is a crest and again these have been prepared and sorted out beforehand. What I do is I have some of these um, containers from, from Lee Valley. And I sorted these feathers a little bit by size, and I have actually a whole box of them somewhere. I can show you. This was the tedious part of, of preparation where I had to sort the feathers and, and so on. So I have smaller ones, bigger ones, um, different, different sizes, and so on. Uh, it doesn't show very well on camera, but... Um, these are, they're not that many very long feathers on a crest. So these are the for size two-aught, three-aught hooks. 
um, and I have the really small ones are, are good for tails if you like to do tails with this kind of stuff anyway so now to get the crest on there is again there is an issue here because if you tie this on as as is it's just going to lie like this very flat and get all all squashed down and so what you want is again pinch the stem here at the tying point and put a little bit of a bend in the feather. The good news is that these crests are pretty tough. And so you don't risk breaking it up. So lie it here at the tying point. And sometimes I find handy putting through the stem of the feather, just put it through the eye of the hook that this way the stem is not going to be in the way and if anything it's going to act as a bit of a guide for placing the feather okay so again i do just sometimes just a one wrap is absolutely all you need to have this hang in place and let you do some adjusting Okay, this is close enough. And now there's nothing left to do but do the head of the fly. And now, of course, actually, if I just trim this on this side, it will be easier. Okay. And then a whip finisher. And I like to do two whip finishes and eventually I'm going to also put a little bit of Sally Hansen on this for extra strength, but that's basically the fly. And what you're aiming for is for this pheasant crest to lie right on top of the wing. Maybe I could have done it a little, a little shorter. So stripped, you basically have to pretty prejudge how much to strip before you put it on because afterwards you, if you pull this further in, then fibers get squashed here and it, you get a bit of a bit of a mess at the head of the fly. But well, that's the general idea. Oops, this doesn't look good here. Yes, I, I didn't cut this very neatly. Oh well. And that's the fly. Now, this is a lot of fuss, as you've seen. And um, Dave, the other Dave, last time made some comments about this being a, a wall fly that catches wallfish. And, um, well, point well taken. And so I decided, okay, let's address Dave's comment. Um, I took, a, this is a saltwater hook. I think it's a mustad. Uh, 34011 or something, the one that's a little longer shanked. And I put a, a tail consisting of a little bit of uh, red hand <laughs> hackle. So it's essentially a, a hackle tip from a, from a dyed red um, hen skin. Then basic um, just mylar and some ribbing here for the body. And then for the wings, I just took two tippets and fussed with them, but only a little bit, basically. I just essentially tried to get them sort of matched, squished them together. And then, as you can see, the feathers are not like, you know, full, full feathers. They're, they're a little bit squished here. 
at the front. And then rather than doing a proper throat, I put on a I put on a, a yellow hackle. And it has the same colors as the original. It doesn't it dispenses with the with the topping and the and the tail out of pheasant uh, crests. And it looks, you know, it has all the key colors and ingredients. And I would expect this to be a reasonable fishing fly imitation of the original. So, you know, that would be my take on and I tried a few different uh, different small variations on that, on that on that theme, and they're an awful lot easier to tie once you give up on the uh, you know trying to do all these extras. So this one actually was tied with just uh, cutting strips out of tippet feathers and doing you know basically uh, strip wings similar to what you would do on other on other wet flies and that's an awful lot easier to tie okay so that's that's that for the uh for the golden girl and some attempts at making it simpler and that's it dave all yours Great. from now on all right so let's uh we'll uh we'll go to spotlight me Oops, if I can find it right here. All right. So one of the things that I'd like to do a little bit with these, some of these flies is, is give a little bit of history on them. Uh, this is called the Carry Special. And what prompted me to do this was that I did a Doc Spratley for the guys at Hague Brown and uh, and then showed them after the Doc Spratley that a similar fly, which is called the Carry Special. And these two flies for me were two of the most productive flies for fishing lakes in Alberta. They're basically a, a dragonfly or a damsel fly uh, imitation. Uh, so the Carry Special, it's named after a Colonel Carry who. Uh, now, rumor has it it was a modified uh, fly from a this guy here, very similar to this, but it was a spay fly that was tied a little more bulky. And it has the same general components. It has a, a body, a fairly skin, long skinny body with a bit of a tail, a pheasant rump that's, uh, that's the hackle. And then they tie this thing at the front that's called the aftershaft feather. Now, an aftershaft feather, when you pull a a uh, a fly off a, a feather off of the pheasant uh backside you it has this little fuzzy little feather that's attached to it right at the base and that's the aftershaft and i've seen this particular fly one of the guys in the club in edmonton used to tie these and he called it a sparrow now the original fly, the spay, rumor has it that it, its name was the monkey-faced Louise. <laughs> Go figure where that fly name came from. Anyway, that's sort of the origin. Simplified down. I'm going to tie a, a, a more a more older version uh, last, but I'm going to tie the simple version first. Uh, the simple version, the simplest version is this guy here which has basically a little bit of pheasant rump for the tail. The body is peacock curl. And then we tie this uh, hackle, which is a pheasant rump hackle. And the, one of the reasons for it showing the guys at Hague Brown this is I wanted to introduce them to doing traditional wet fly hackles um, tied in by the tip and using what's called a folded hackle where you fold the barbs back. So that's the first version. And then the easier version is this guy here, which uses a, a wool body. And the easiest wool for me to use is actually a uh, embroidery thread. And this one has a little light copper rib. Uh, you can tie it with or without the copper rib. And you can do them in various colors because you can get, of course, a gazillion colors of embroidery thread and you can get a bunch of different colors of dyed pheasant rump. This is an olive version. And the one I'm going to tie today, because it's a little easier to see what's going on, 
is this guy here, which is a red bodied version with the complication of having a, a rib. Uh, but the, the tail and the, the hackle are dyed purple. Uh, I, I like the color contrast on this. And it'll be easier to follow the, those colors. And then the second uh, version I'm going to tie is the one that's a little more close to the original. And it you <laughs> the original actually used uh, uh, something mm -hmm. like badger for the tail and then dubbed body of uh, groundhog or something, and then the hackle. Uh, I had neither of those two materials. So uh, what I used is the second sort of version. This body is actually black bear hair. And I've got some black bear hair and brown bear hair uh, prepared to tie that. So we'll do that. So we'll start first with the simple version. And the hook I'm using is a, a standard barbless uh, wet fly. It's a streamer wave hook by Hanuk. It's a number 10. It's about 3x long. It's got a, a ring eye. I like, I like ring eyes for these because you can fish them on a uh, non-slip loop and it gives them a little bit nicer action. Um, so the first thing is thread and for this one I'm going to use black a dot and I will tie it in right at the front. Now to make this tying operation simple and quick I'm going to do things in a little bit reverse order from what you normally tie. Normally you wrap your thread down the butt, shank of the hook and uh, tie in the tail and all that stuff and then come back and tie the body in later. But I'm going to do it different. I'm going to take my red embroidery thread. Now, red embroidery thread is actually, it's multiple strands and it's twisted, not braided. So if you tie it in right, you can make it nice and round and bulky, or you can let it unravel a bit and it will go flat. So I'm going to do, just make a little, uh, if I can get this stuff out of the way. Yeah, you can see the four strands sticking out. I'm going to just turn those off because I want it flat to start with. So I make a little loop and then I just, as I have it first wrap, I'm just going to pull these back a little bit so I don't have a lot of stuff to trim. When I wrap down over top of this embroidery thread, I'm going to try and wrap it on the side of the hook facing me. I want it out of the way when I'm doing the other stuff at the back of the fly. And I don't want to create a big bump at the back. But I want a fairly smooth body, so I do a nice set of wraps down and I'll stick that in the material clip. Okay, now comes the tail. Now, you can get this pheasant rump in a whole raft of colors. I've got a bag full of different colors. And when you buy them inexpensively, they come sewn together like this. Uh, and you have to pull them out. Now, the better ones come off of a skin. You have more, you can see there's the skin. You can see all these little aftershaft feathers here. Um, the better ones come on a skin because you can, they get a, a better range of sizes. So what I'm gonna use here is a, one that's kind of a, it's kind of ragged and I'm not gonna use it to do an actual hackle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip all of the stuff off this feather, except for the very tip. Just strip down off. So I got a little bit left here and I'm, so I stripped out so I've got kind of, you know, half a dozen feathers on either side of the stem. And I'll set that down on top of the hook. I want the tail to be probably a gap and a half up towards the back. So I'm going to measure that and I'll tie it in a couple of wraps right on the top. and set that right on the top of the hook. Make sure it's there. Trim a little bit up this, I'll leave a little bit of tag 
because I don't want a big bump at the back here. I want the body to be relatively smooth. So I just wrap those little bits down. And when I'm halfway up the shank there, I'm going to put in the rib. And, and the rib here is some fine copper wire. I'll get a piece of that out off the spool. And once again, I'll start with the wire halfway down the hook where I've got my thread hanging. And when I wrap the copper wire down the shank of the hook, I'm going to pull it on the far side of the hook so that the ribs wire is on the far side of the hook, right back to where the tail's tied. I'm gonna put that in the material clip as well. Bring my thread all the way up to the front right behind the eye, and I'll throw a single half edge. Nah, missed. There we go. And what that does, that, that allows me to get my <coughs> bobbin holder out of the way, because I'm going to use, to make this easy, I'm going to use the rotary on the vise. And now take my floss, and because it's, it's spun, clockwise, I want to do a little bit of a counter clockwise on the first wrap. You'll see it flattens out a little bit where the hook is. Now, once I bring it around, you can see that the, the threads of the uh, embroidery thread are starting to come apart. They're not, they're not all bound up in one. So as I wrap, I'm going to have to make a counterclockwise, sorry, clockwise, Turn, sorry, clockwise turn. About every couple of turns, I have to make a clockwise turn to keep that that thre thread flattened out. So there's four strands side by side. What this does is it makes a really nice smooth body. And I'm going to stop probably three eighths of an inch behind the eye. I need room to put the hackle on. So. I'm going to leave a decent space. And then I'm going to wrap back. And depending on how much you want to overlap those strands, you can make the body thicker or thinner. Again, every once in a while, you have to make a clockwise twist of the embroidery thread in order to get it to sit flat. I'll get to the back. I'll do the same thing going forward again. And you see I stopped a little shy so that I get a little bit of a torpedo shape at the back there. And I'll wrap it a little bit thicker in the middle, a little overlap of those four threads. And then when I get to the front again, I'm gonna let it go a little faster and thin down the shape. At that point, I can get my bobbin holder out of the way and wrap down on top of the embroidery thread. I'll do one wrap in front, just to lock it in. And trim it nice and close. At this point, I'm gonna wrap my rib and I'm going to wrap it the opposite direction. I'm gonna do what's called counter wrap from the far side over. And I wanna make rib about five or six wraps down the body of the fly. When I get to the front, I'll do a couple of wraps close and top and wrap it front and then trim the, trim the wire out with the base of my scissors so I don't ruin the points. All right. Now the, uh, the, the, the hackle that I'm going to use to wrap the front is I've chosen a, a decent length one. I want to pre-measure the length of the hackle to be about the length of the fly that the whole shank of the hook in a bit. Uh, and that this this is about right. 
just sticks back to roughly where the tail ends. And of course, when you're going through your sewn bunch, you can pick ones that are longer or shorter. You try and pick one that suits the hook. Now, I'm gonna take the fuzz off of the shank, all the fuzz off the bottom. I'll strip that out. I don't wanna don't want to pull too hard because sometimes you can break the stem. And right where the fuzz ends is where I'm gonna start wrapping. And I'm gonna leave all of these nice long hackles there. There's a couple. Get rid of it. So they're all lined up like that. Then what you do is you wet your fingers a little bit and you stroke all these guys gently back, except for the very tip. Now, the beauty of this is, is if you're gonna tie a whole bunch of these in a row, you save this tip and use that for the tail of the next one. So I got all those things stripped or stroked back. Now I'll turn it over, it's, there's a curve to this. I'm gonna turn it over so the curve faces the hook. And I will set it down there on the near side of the hook with the tip pointing down a little bit. What this does, this is allows me to, to wrap the thing nice and smooth without turning it over. Before I wrap it though, I'm gonna, I want to leave a good eye width behind with nothing on it where I want to tie my head on. But I want to build a little ramp with thread back so that it, it's kind of tapered. It's thicker at the back than the front. And a little bit tapered up to where the body is there. And that's a good two eye widths back is where I'm going to tie this feather in. Hold it down at that angle right where the thread is. And tied on with two or three good solid wraps. Wrap forward down the ramp a tiny bit, and then lift up, tie that off, and trim the butt, the tip section out. Now by tying it down and locking it in like that, there's no danger of me pulling the stem out when I wrap the hackle. So from here, I'll move my thread <laughs> right forward to the eye to keep it out of the way. Hold up the stem straight up. Use your finger to give a little kink there. And wet my fingers and the stem straight up. I'm gonna stroke these fibers back so that they're folded around the stem. See how they make a nice little fold. Now I wrap around the hook. And as I go under the hook, I have to keep stroking this stuff back so that it doesn't get bound up on each other. And each subsequent wrap goes in front of the previous wrap. Now on some of these, if the feathers are pretty sparse, you might not get more than one or two wraps. But these ones, if I get three or four, I'm doing well. And if you can only get one or two wraps, then you'll need to tie another feather in and double it up. So this is like three. And when I get there, you see I still left a little gap at the front. I can wrap over top of that. And wrap back front and trim the stem. I see all this stuff is nicely spread around. I want to build a little bit of a head. And by building the head, I can wrap back over top of some of that hackle to sort of keep it from being completely at right angles to the hook to sort of make a torpedo shaped body a little bit. And then we'll just wet finish out. Tie it off. I'll just 
put a little bit of little dab of head cement here. Teeny dab. Just to soak into the, the knot. And just to make sure the eye is clear, I'll use my bodkin just to make sure the eye has not got any glue in it. And there you go. That is the carry special. Excellent. And now I'm going to tie you the, the other version, which has a different body material. Um, if one was to, now I've got, like I say, I've got a whole raft of different colors. I, I, I kind of like the olive one as well. Um, you'll notice that if you get a, even a dyed one, if you get the really nice kind of hackle, they have a little bit of barring in them. And that, that makes a really nice uh, speckled appearance to that wrapped hackle. Uh, so you can get them. These dyed ones tend to have less of that, uh, but they, the all of ones uh, actually show a little bit. So you kind of be a little picky about your hackles. Now the one, what I'm gonna tie now, the second one here is not going to use a rib. It's not going to use floss. The body and the tail are going to be bare hair. And what you can't see here is that I've gone through my packet of bare hair. And I'll show you that. This is black bear. You can see I've got find the longest black bear you can get. Because that's what's going to be the body of the fly. It's going to be wrapped black bear. So I have two little pieces. And what I've done is I've cut some of them off the, uh, the hide and laid them down on the bench on a piece of tape with all the tips lined up as best as I can get them. I've done the same thing with a little piece of this guy, which is uh, looks like dyed brown or, or bleached brown bear hair. That's going to be the tail because I don't have marmot and I don't have groundhog, so it's going to be a different tail. Now this is the, this is what it's going to look like at the end of the day. Uh, what you can't see really well in this light is the speckling from using, I guess you call it the blue phase of the pheasant or the pheasant rump. This is what it looks like. You can see this greenish color. It's also actually got a little blue towards the tip. Uh, that's the natural. And uh, this gives a lot of modeling to the, to the hackle. So these are, this is where you want to try and buy your pheasant is on the, on the stem. Uh, these ones here are further up on the rump of the pheasant. So they tend to be relatively short. So they'd be great for tying smaller flies. And as you get towards the back end, you're gonna see you get more of the tan and less of the green. So you wanna pick one that's got the right length of hackle, uh, that's kind of in, in the right spot. Uh, and I'll do that, I got a hand that's sitting here, there we are. So that's what I've got here. I've selected a couple. And again, what I've tried to do with these is I've tried to pick the hackle length the length of the hook. Uh, so th those are pre-selected off the back end of that, uh, that patch I just showed you. Uh, so we'll get a hook. And again, I'll put that in. The, I like these, I really like these Hanek barbless. You don't have to debarb them. And uh, the eye is a ring eye. I'll do roughly the same thing here. This is not going to have a rib. Uh, and so, and, and the material is the bare hair. It's gonna be wound forward. So I wanna dress the hook with this guy to keep things from spinning around the shank. I'll put a reasonable number of wraps of thread down the hook. I'm just still using that black eight dot. Take it right down to the bend. Trim it off. Now I pre pre prepared my brown bear hair <laughs> with all the tips 
nicely evened up using a hair stacker. Can do, can do that with the brown stuff, but you can't do that with the black. You gotta kind of hand stack it with the black. So I got all the tips nice and evened up. And what I'm gonna do with this is lay it down and I'm gonna make that again, about one and a half gap lengths behind the hook. And I'll wrap over it. Do a couple of wraps. Then to make that tail stand up off the shank, I'm going to wrap behind it, a wrap, and then in front, and then wrap behind it again, and in front. And what that does is it keeps that tail from collapsing around the bend. I wrap up the shank to basically provides a little bulk underneath until I get back to this point about oh, three eye widths behind eye. Trim that off and wrap back over top. Again, trying to keep the body relatively even without any bumps. No rib on this because the, the bare hair itself will be ribbed. And I've pre-prepared two batches of bare hair. And the reason for that is that when I put these in, you'll see that it doesn't go all the way up the shank when you use the whole thing with the bare hair. So I wanna get my little patch of bare hair where I've tried to even the tips up a bit. And there's a, a butt ends there. I'll take it down to where I've got all the tips pretty close to shank length. And I'm gonna tie these in by the tip, right at that point. And snug it down right where the tail is. Hold these up against the hook shank and do a wrap up the shank. And there's a, a couple of extra lengths there, so I'm gonna pick those up and trim them off. How comes the fun part? I'll get my Griffin hackle pliers and I'll come down here to the end of the bear hair, grab it all together. <clears throat> and now I'm going to spin it. Nice tight spin using my hackle pliers. Oh, oh, that came undone. <laughs> Didn't grab it far enough up. This is why you end up uh, having to, there we go. Now I got it all spun up. And now I wrap that spun bear hair around, around the shank of the hook. And I have to give it a little twist every time because every wrap tends to unwrap the previous wrap, set of wraps. And when I get to the, there, that's about as far as I'm gonna get. This stuff is a little bit hard to work with because it's kind of stiff. Anyway, I've got it wrapped up there. Bring my thread back and wrap my thread out of the way so I can take this up and trim it now tight. Now you see I've got a fairly skinny body, which is why I have got two batches of this prepared. Bring my thread back to a little bit under the hook again. Let's get this lump out of there. Take my second batch of bear hair and get all the, the tips 
cleaned up. Moving my thread forward. Me right back to the near the back, and I'm going to do that wrap, snug it down, pull it back a bit, wrap over the middle, get my thread up to the front, and once again take my hackle pliers. Well, I see what happened with my hackle pliers. The little bit of heat shrink that I had on the end has come off. So now I can't grab it with those Griffin ones. So I'm going to have to do it the hard way. Watch out. Grab it with my regular hackle pliers. <laughs> and this is when I'm, I need to trim spin. Spin it up really good and tight. That's why, that's why it kept coming out of the tip of the hackle pliers. I want to make sure this is going to start right at the back. So I'm going to bring my thread down and Bind it down right to the back and bring my thread up to the front. And again, I'm going to start at the back. And every time I come around, I'm going to make a twist in that bare hair. And what happens is it, it kind of kinks up. Oh, come on. You're being ornery this morning. Didn't get it started right. Have to get it right to the back, I guess. There we go. So this is this is a little tricky to work with. Again, every wrap I gotta got to give it another spin to try and get this to bulk up. And you can see it, it gives a almost a ribbed appearance to the body. And tie him down. And of course, there's a few little hairs that are going to stick out all over the place. That wasn't the most elegant body I've ever tied, I'll tell you. Once again, uh, build up this little spot here where I'm going to wrap the hackles. And prepare the hackle by taking the fuzz off. Going to back to the now. This time I'm going to tie two of these hackles in because I started back a little further. This right there. Ah, come on. Get on. Got to get it in the right spot here. the tip out. Wrap the hackle. Use my hackle pliers because this is a short hackle. You got to keep making this little twist in the feather every time you wrap to make sure that the feathers are able to be stripped back or strapped folded back. Not the most elegant in the world, that's for sure. That's one. Now the second one. 
And this just gives a little more bulk and a little more variation to the hackle. I probably had a little too much bear hair in each clump when I started that, which made it very hard to spin. I probably could have done with about two thirds of what I had in each package of for each group of hair. Get the tip out of there. My hackle pliers again. Strip them back, fold them back. <clears throat> Again, as you run underneath, yes, you have to actually reach underneath the hook point and, and fold those guys back. Otherwise, they tend to get a little trapped there. There we go. Get out and make sure I've got a, a nice little head built here. Once again, the idea is to uh, have a little bit of a tapered head and to push the folded hackles back a little bit so that they, uh, they form that nice cone shape. And then we'll what finish. So that one's a little bulkier because it's got the two hackles and some of the versions are, are tied with two, make them a little more robust, I guess you could say. And turn them off. And there's a bare hair bodied Carry special. And that's it. So we'll go off the spotlight. Okay. So that's him. So there's lots of variations you can you can do these uh, flies in, so you get to play a bit. No, very still good. On. thank you. Oh. Hey, Mohammed. Hello, Mike, how are you doing? Oh, good. Have Mike, you got a giant turn the beer there? the recording off, uh, Dave. Hey, pardon? You can turn the recording off now. Yeah, I can. Yeah, let me do that. What was that, Mohammed? I got a bear there beside me. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that a giant bear you have right there?